Well, you spoke the truth. It's a box, all right. It's more than a box. Um, from here, it looks like exactly a box. I mean, that box is trying to tell me something. Hey, hello, how do you do? Shady Durex here. Back when I first introduced Daria to the channel, the two episodes I got the most requests for were Arts and Crafts and Boxing Daria. At the time, I made a mental note to prioritize reviewing these episodes first so I could please my audience. Unfortunately, none of you intellectuals bothered to tell me that Boxing Daria is the last episode of the final season. Do y'all realize how many good episodes I passed up trying to get to this one? See Jane Run, Through Lens Darkly, the entire Is It Fall Yet movie? All of them were ignored so I could make it here. In case I'm not being clear, I'm passing the blame for my lack of Daria content onto all of you. Now that we've reestablished that nothing bad is ever my fault, let's go ahead and take a look at the episode so many of you were begging for a review of. The episode starts with, um, a black screen apparently? Oh wait, hold on, let me turn up the audio. Miss, are you alright? Miss? Ah oh, jeez, we're doing this again? <sighs> Fine, whatever. So you remember how in Jimmy I had slight critiques about how the episode tried to hook the viewer by giving them a preview to the climax? Well this episode of Daria does the same thing, only way worse. Like at least in Jimmy, there are reasons other than hooking the audience as to why showing the climax early was good for the overall story. In fact a lot of you defended that decision, and some even came up with ideas that made me second guess my critique. However I highly doubt anyone can do that for this particular episode, especially since, spoiler alert, this preview is overhyping its existence. Yeah, what you're hearing now is not nearly as bad nor as important as it sounds, but the episode wants you to think it is so you won't change that channel. Giving the writers the benefit of the doubt, maybe this was added just to pad time. Anyway, the episode cuts to some time earlier at the Morgendorfer house where the family is getting a new fridge installed. I had a household emergency. Oh, our refrigerator suddenly broke. What do you mean I should chill? Ha, <laughs> I get it. We transition to Lawndale High where Daria and Jane are... <sighs> I'm sorry, I gotta fix this right quick. There we go. Yeah, for some reason, the show eventually started doing this thing where character profiles don't make it all the way to the bottom of the screen. I guess it's because if you were watching this on a 90s television, you'd never notice. But here on our 2020 screens, it's very distracting. As I was saying, we transition to Lawndale High where Daria and Jane are discussing future plans. Daria talks about how her boyfriend is heading out of town for a week so she and Jane will have more time to spend together. And if you haven't seen the show and you're wondering how the crap a girl like Daria got a boyfriend, well firstly I'd say you're underestimating the potential thirst of teenage boys, and second, it's a long story. Attention Lawndale High students, some individuals have been flaunting outside snacks. I'm afraid we're going to have to institute snack spot checks. Daria, hello. I want to ask you something. I'm not surrendering my pudding snack. What? Ah, a perfectly good joke, wasted on someone who wasn't paying attention. What Mr. O'Neill actually wants is to ask Daria if she'd be interested in volunteering for touring middle schoolers. Forget it. Forget it? Yes, I believe that is a wise decision. With your vivid storyteller's imagination, you can really put yourself in the shoes of these young people. Oh, there is a lot wrong with what you just said. First of all, Daria doesn't need to use her imagination. She was an up and coming freshman not too long ago. She can just remember how it felt. Second, even if that wasn't the case, it was established that Daria, while a good writer, has difficulties meshing her viewpoints with others. The characters she creates have to be fictional or her imagination struggles. This is an opportunity to polish up those people skills. I promised myself I'd get you to do this. And there's your problem. You're not doing this for her, you're doing this for you. Mr. O'Neill is correct when he says that this is an opportunity for Daria as she desperately needs to work on interacting with others, but it's not something she wants to do nor is it something she would enjoy, so it'd basically be torture for her. The next scene shows Daria and her boyfriend. Everyone, this is Tom. Hi, Hi Tom. Tom. He's an extremely important character, but what makes him important is not relevant to this episode, so we're gonna skip most of the fluff. The only thing you need to know is that he's Daria's boyfriend and the only person other than Jane whom she feels truly comfortable around. Tom invites Daria to visit him while he's out of town just because, you know, she's his girlfriend and he likes being around her. Daria declines because she's very antisocial and would more than likely have an awful time with that many people around. I appreciate the offer, but you know, too many people, not enough evacuation routes. Felt that in my soul, jeez. Alright, back to the Morgendorfers. Man, I never noticed how big their kitchen is. Actually, when you stop and look at it, all the main characters in this show have really nice houses. What a good time the 90s must have been. Daria notices that the movers let the box to the fridge in the backyard. Helen tells Daria that she and Quinn can move it to the curb. Isn't that sort of brute donkey work the reason they made fathers? Okay, that was funny, but I'm too shocked to appreciate the humor. I'm surprised I that- you being so traditional. 
Okay, the episode just stole my commentary. I guess we can just move along. I'm not being traditional. I'm being lazy. <laughs> okay, my shock has ended. That is an amazing joke. <laughs> That might just be my favorite joke in the entire series, I'm not sure. It's either that or what Jane said in Arts and Crass. Unfortunately for Daria, she can't be lazy because Jake had to take a last minute trip out of town. Daria gets unusually suspicious about the trip, but drops the topic almost immediately. Did we have one of those when I was a kid? I seem to remember spending a lot of time playing in one when I was a kid. Yeah, I highly doubt yeah, that, that Daria. Da I don't remember you doing much playing at all. <laughs> hmm. I guess watching the entire show has put me on the same wavelength as the writers. Since she had no luck with Helen, Daria tries to see if Quinn remembers having a box, but Quinn is too preoccupied to even try to remember. Daria, I'm doing manual labor here. I'm not in the mood for a stroll down memory road. It's an extremely light box and they're only moving it to the side of the road. I actually find it kind of funny that one thing Quinn and Daria have in common is that they both detest manual labor. Why do you think dad really went away? Daria, why are you so weird? That may sound like Quinn's usual quip against Daria, but it's not. It's a legitimate question. Quinn actually gets along with Daria a lot more in the final season. Daria takes a trip down memory lane to try and recall the events the box triggered. Jake, she's a child. She doesn't know any better. That's what she wants you to believe. Uh, I see what we're doing here. This is all going to be some big misunderstanding, right? Baby Daria overheard this fight thinking they're talking about her, but really what's happening is that Jake and Helen are talking about like a TV show or something. Oh joy, can't wait for that payoff. Daria, for reasons I'm not sure even she fully understands yet, decides that she can't part with the giant box and pulls it away from the curb. Unfortunately, for Quinn, Daria doesn't bother telling anyone that she's doing this. I thought I asked you and Daria to move that box out to the curb. What? We did. Maybe you dreamt that you did. But Mom, I swear. I don't have time to play games. Helen, dear, I love you, but you just hit a major trigger of mine. One of my biggest problems growing up was that I didn't feel like people ever listened to me. So it greatly annoys me when I see adults simply dismissing what kids are trying to tell them. I'm going to give Helen a pass this time around since usually she's doing the opposite and hangs on her daughter's every word. But she could have easily rewarded her orders to suggest that whether or not Quinn did the job yesterday, it still needed to be done today. Stupid freaking carton. Hard freaking labor. I'm only freaking human. Again with the complaints about labor. Female viewers, is physical labor really this daunting to you? I mean, if it is, I don't necessarily blame you. Personally, I hate work of any kind because, you know, lazy. But if I had to choose between typical male work and typical female work, I'm not going against the grain. I'd much rather be moving and or fixing things than cleaning or cooking. Wait, is working on a computer more of a guy thing or a girl thing? Because that's definitely at the top. Despite Quinn's efforts, Dario once again rescues her box from the side of the road. Later at the school, Mr. O'Neill makes another attempt to get Daria as a tour guide. If nominated, I will not run. If elected, I will not serve. But Jody's doing it. That's because Jody, Jody does, does everything. Oh, I'm goodness, writers. I get that the shtick of this show is witty dialogue, but can you tone it down? I'm trying to do commentary here. I'd do it. If I'm giving a tour, then I can't be in class. And that's a simple example of why I prefer Jane over Daria. Despite also being jaded, Jane is a lot more opportunistic and optimistic. Though I don't I don't blame Daria for refusing this opportunity, and honestly, I really don't like Mr. O'Neill laying on so much pressure for her to do it. She's not playing hard to get, dude. No means no. I was a tour guide in college and I can tell you, Daria would not be a good fit for the job. For one, she's an antisocial introvert and doing something like this would completely drain her social battery. I know because I'm also an antisocial introvert and every tour I did drained me. And for those of you who are wondering why I signed up in the first place, college was where I did a lot of unusual things in trying to figure out who I really was. Second, Daria is awful at displaying emotions other than sarcasm, annoyance, and anger. I don't mean she won't do it, I mean she can't. There was literally an entire episode about her inability to fake sounding interested. And finally, well, I'll let Daria say this one. I'd feel like a complete hypocrite telling impressionable youngsters what a great place this is when I don't believe it myself. Yep, that right there. She feels she has to always give her own personal opinion even when she's not representing herself. Mr. O'Neill assures Daria that she'll be allowed to be honest and he actually encourages it because unlike Jody and other popular kids, Daria has a unique perspective that middle schoolers don't often get to see. He'd rather these incoming kids know that outcasts like Daria are also welcome at the school. This confession, however, has the opposite effect on Daria and actually upsets her, partially because of what's going on at home, but Daria doesn't know that yet. Is everything alright? No. Why do I have to be pegged as the misfit all the time? 
Uh, because you are a misfit, Daria. You don't fit in among the majority of your peers. That's what a misfit is. Being annoyed at the label isn't going to change anything. Never forget what you are. The rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor. And it can never be used to hurt you. Daria continues to grow more and more frustrated with her memories to the point that she starts getting aggressive with Helen, who's starting to catch on that something's wrong. Where's dad? I told you, he's at a conference. Call him if you want to speak to him. Why? So he can lie to me too? Why do you refuse to acknowledge that we had a box like that when I was a kid? Daria, are you feeling okay? Wanting someone to talk to, Daria calls up Tom and asks if his invitation is still open. Can you get back any sooner? I wish I could. Wait. Are you kidding? Do you have to make fun of me? I'm not making fun of you. Oh no, she's doing the thing again. Do you still want me to come up there? I mean, it would be great for me if you came up, but I think you'd have a horrible time. You said you wanted me to come up. Now you say you don't. He literally said the opposite. What are you? Ah! Seriously, is something wrong? Call me tomorrow. All right, bye. But we can talk right now. So ultimately, I like Daria. However, she has a plethora of things about her personality that I am not fond of. One of those traits is her tendency to gaslight. Whenever Daria has emotional turmoil, she projects what she's going through onto those around her and lashes out at them. And then when those people try to ask her what's going on, she just refuses to tell them. Now, I'm not saying having this trait makes Daria a bad character. I've actually seen a lot of women openly confess to regularly behaving this way to the point that it's a cliche among them. And Daria's a teenager, so she's not likely to know how to handle her own emotions. But however common and or realistic this trait may be, it always drives me up a wall when a character causes problems that could easily be solved by them simply communicating with those around them. Daria goes further to investigate her feelings while simultaneously letting Jane in on the mystery. Quite soothing, really. You're right. It is soothing. I was kidding. Daria, what are you doing? Yes, this is right. Daria? Being inside the box, Daria begins to feel more comfortable and once again remembers her parents fighting. Only this time, she recalls her dad storming off when it was all over. Daria's not sure of everything until Quinn comes in and confirms it all. Daria, I remembered! You were right! Do you remember what they were fighting about? Um, yeah. They were fighting about you. With all the information in place, Daria is able to remember exactly what happened that day. We flash back to that time to see baby Daria taking a Rorschach test. This picture lets you make up what it's about. Then why don't I just draw my own picture? Actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea. The point of Rorschach tests and those like it is to engage with the person and see what they choose to focus on. Having Daria draw something would still allow this teacher to be able to do that. In fact, Daria asking why she can't just draw her own picture says just as much about her as actually taking the test would. One little boy or girl might look at it and see a fire truck. Another might see a herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plain. I, I understood that reference. Wow, that's a really good callback to the first episode. Daria, what do you see in the picture? A herd of beautiful wild ponies running free across the plains. Last time I took one of these tests, they said they could be whatever I wanted. That's a different test, dear. Also, it makes a ton of sense to Daria's character. The first episode had Daria giving answers people wanted to hear just so they'd leave her alone. It would make sense that when she originally gave her answer to the image test, she was most likely just repeating her old counselor verbatim because she thought that was an answer that people wanted to hear. The counselor questions baby Daria's odd activities. Apparently, she doesn't like to play with other kids. Shocker. Baby Daria replies that other kids don't understand her and just make fun of her whenever she talks, so reading alone is a lot more preferable to her. Later, we see the Morgendorf. What is that? I talk a lot to the other kids and they talk back. Paternal instincts rising must protect with life. Sweetie, it's a little hard for your father and me to keep taking time off from work to talk to the counselor. If you give the other boys and girls a chance, you might find someone you like. Uh, I can understand people being concerned that maybe baby Daria is depressed or something since she's not engaging with the other kids, but her wanting to be by herself and read isn't hurting anyone. Is there really a need to pressure her like this, especially since she's still developing? And the Morgander for parents keep responding as if baby Daria isn't even trying to interact with anyone. Baby Daria says multiple times that she did try and she didn't enjoy the experience. The other kids were mean to her and she didn't like them anyway. Later that night, we finally get to hear in full what actually happened during the big argument. Jake, this isn't about you. It's about her having a little trouble fitting in. She doesn't want to fit in. Why can't you admit that? Jake, she's a child. Oh, wow. 
Apparently, this isn't a moment of subverting expectations. The Morgendorfer parents legit had an argument about baby Daria. A part of me wants to congratulate the episode for surprising me, but then again, the reason current media is chock full of expectation subversion is to avoid predictability. Is the story really doing anything impressive when it just sticks to what's supposed to happen? By the way, Jake is factually correct. Baby Daria doesn't want to fit in, but in his anger, he's massively missing the big picture, which is what Helen is trying to tell him. Baby Daria is a child who's still trying to understand the world, but is having trouble socially interacting. The girl is too young to properly understand right from wrong, as well as consequences. Expecting her to simply understand what the problem is would be asking way too much from a kindergartner. It's so frustratingly rare that I'm ever on Jake's side in anything. I mean, he's a male in an all-female household, so naturally he's going to struggle, but at this point, I've lost all sympathy for him. I've seen the dude avoid or flat out ignore getting to know his family way too many times to give him any benefit of the doubt. At the end of the fight, Jake storms out, slamming the door on his way. After it all quiets down, baby Daria climbs into a big box to read. And so, with all the pieces revealed, we the audience can finally understand Daria's mental state. She's feeling self-conscious about being an outcast because she remembered how this trait caused her parents to fight. She's paranoid about Jake being gone because she's scared to relive the night he left due to her. She's been accusing her mother of lying because this was a strong memory for Daria, so it seems odd that anyone else would have forgotten it. And she finds comfort inside the box because it was a place of refuge during this stressful moment in her life. Eventually, Jake comes home and both he and Helen are concerned about Daria's refusal to leave the box. Quinn explains to them both about how Daria is upset about the fight they had years ago, a fight which both of them had completely forgotten about. With this knowledge, Helen and Jake plead with Daria to come out of the box and talk. All right, but you have to promise to be completely honest with me. Okay. Helen, is that such a good idea? Jake? Really, Jake? Really? When I was six years old, did you have a big fight about me? No. Yes. Yes. Oh, my goodness, Jake! We had a fight one night, and you happened to be the topic. Not the cause. We knew how smart you were. Talking to you was like talking to a miniature adult. But you wouldn't engage with the other kids. I was trying to resume a full-time workload and still raise two young girls. Your father was in a job he hated with a really sadistic boss. Your problems at school were sort of the straw that broke the camel's back. After hearing what her parents have to say, Daria leaves without a word. It's not revealed until later, but she's leaving because she needs to gather her thoughts before fully confronting them, and the best way to do that is for her to talk with someone close to her. So she plans to take up Tom's offer for a visit. Before she can get there, however, Daria swerves onto the shoulder road, narrowly avoiding getting into a car accident. Miss, are you alright? Miss! And yeah, that's it. That's what the big preview at the beginning was building towards, a non-incident that has nothing to do with what's actually going on. Not wanting to keep driving after what just happened, but still needing to talk to someone, Daria falls back on old reliable. Ah, it's so good, it's so good! So good, so good, so good! The absolute best thing about this show is the friendship between Daria and Jane. It's so realistic, yet at the same time so touching. Daria is not an affectionate person. She's extremely uncomfortable with intimacy to the point that even Tom has to tread carefully with how close he gets to her. Jane is the only person whom Daria would run up to like this and hug, and even then, it's a rare occurrence, hence the confused look on Jane's face. Daria must be in an extremely fragile state of mind to give this kind of reaction. As superfluous as that non-crash was, I'm glad it happened because I would much rather see Daria talk with Jane than with Tom. I genuinely felt relief on Daria's behalf when Jane entered the scene because I knew things would get better if she was there. After watching all the seasons of this show, I have absolutely no doubt that these two love each other and are better off having met one another. With someone she can trust to bounce thoughts off of, Daria is able to confront her emotions. It's not the fight. What I didn't realize is what a pain I've been when I thought I was just being me. At 12, I decide to try out some Shakespearean insults on my teachers. My parents are the ones who get called into school. Gotcha. But I never got the idea that they minded that much. Yeah, which just makes it even worse. Oh my goodness, yes, Daria! Two revelations in one episode! Now that's what I'm talking about! Finally, Daria realizes that there are consequences to her behavior that don't just affect her. She also realizes just how much her parents have to put up with in raising her and that they don't mind doing it. 
This happens to a lot of people with loving parents. Eventually you realize how annoying you were as a kid and yet for some baffling reason, your parents put up with every little thing you did. So after getting her thoughts together, Daria goes back to fully discuss things with her parents. Notice the lack of hugging back. Like I said, she doesn't like intimacy. Why did you have to run away when you heard that story about getting called into school? Yeah, we used to get called into school all the time. Jake. It was the other side to you being so smart and perceptive. Oh. A good job, Jake. You managed to get one good parenting line. We weren't happy to be called into school because we knew it meant you weren't happy. But we were never unhappy with you. Um, I can believe that with Helen, but Jake specifically blamed Daria for what was happening. Meh, I'll let it slide since they said everyone was heated at the time. Um, do you think I'm a misfit? Yes. Daria, you make your choices. You choose not to interact and we understand. It doesn't make you a misfit. No, what makes her a misfit is why she chooses not to interact, which is that she's not like the other kids, AKA she doesn't fit in with them. Helen is doing a thing here that I'm not sure I agree with. Right now, what Daria needs emotionally is to know that she's accepted, despite her tendency to be the odd one out. Helen is giving that to her, assuring her that no matter her decisions, her family is accepting of who she is, and Helen does this by not criticizing Daria's choice to abstain from being a tour guide. That student tour thing is a matter of principle. Here's the thing. Just say the thing. Sure, this time around she's being accepting, but Helen is usually the first one to criticize Daria's decisions. Jake, will you put down the macaroni and ask your daughter why she has to be so cynical all the time? Shoes, sometimes Helen will go out of her way to force a decision onto Daria. Mr. O'Neill called looking for day camp volunteers and I signed you up. You didn't. You keep hiding your real face behind that antisocial mask and one day the mask will be your face. I'm not letting that happen. So really what Helen is doing is choosing to behave abnormally specifically to make Daria feel better. And I'm pretty sure the episode is aware she's doing this because Jake tries to course correct only to be silenced by Helen. You know, if I could interject here, it could also be argued that Daria herself is aware her mother is doing this since she's goading her on in the first place. Now, you all know me, I'm a Logos guy. Emotional arguments don't really do it for me and as a plethora of my videos will demonstrate, I don't care if my arguments hurt people's feelings. I've leaned on the concept that facing the truth is the best way to deal with reality, even if it means hurting your feelings along the way. So even though I see the short term benefit of what Helen is doing, that being Daria feeling better, I can't say I agree with the strategy because my priority would be Daria facing reality regardless of how she feels. I don't know why it's so hard for cartoon parents to say, I will always approve of you even if I don't approve of your decisions. Daria leaves her parents with a much greater appreciation for them than before. When she gets to her room, she finds an unexpected surprise. Didn't know if you'd need this, but just in case, Quinn. Quinn gets so much freaking good character development. For some baffling reason, it's all in the final season, but it's still there and it makes me love her character. The episode ends with Daria caving in and giving the tour with Jane. Of course, they do it in their own Daria and Jane way. Gym and locker rooms. Wear for 20 bucks, I'll show you which showers haven't been peed in. My friend is just kidding you, of course. They've all been peed in. I know this is trying to say something about Daria's character, but I'm not exactly sure what. Was she still feeling guilty about making things hard for her parents? Is she trying to meet them halfway? Is she making it up to Mr. O'Neill for projecting her problems onto him? Like, I don't see what Daria giving the tour accomplishes, even though I know it's trying to accomplish something. And that was Boxing Daria. I immediately understand why people requested this so much. Playing armchair psychology is what we do here on the Shady Durax channel, so this episode was right up my alley. I pretty much love any episode that forces some self-reflection onto Daria, and it was surprising that, despite it seeming like the parents were about to face some flack, the episode concludes with Daria being humbled. It's so easy to make the smug, intellectual character always come out as the voice of reason. In fact, a lot of stories today make that mistake, so it's great that this show understood Daria needed to be taught a lesson lesson from time to time. Something else the episode points out, though I'm not sure if it was intentional, is that you'd be surprised how some kids are affected by what a lot of people consider to be minor events. No one else in the Morgendorfers remembered the fight, nor the box, yet for Daria, that time in her life left a significant scar. With the usual great comedy and storytelling, but with added character development, I'd say this is absolutely worthy of being the final episode to the show, Daria. This has been Shady Durags. So long, farewell, I have you to say, goodbye.